Hey, this is Mr. Mergens. Hi, this is Mr. Rally. Hi, grads. Hi, this is Miss Murdoch. And this is Miss Lou. Hi, I'm Mr. Lid. Hey, y'all, Sister Allen here. Hello, Mike Stoneberg, AKA Stoney. Hello, I'm Miss Louie. Hello, this is Miss Tornichuk. Hi, I'm Miss O'Neill. Hi, I'm Mr. Yubiel, and this is my 2021 autocomplete. 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 Auto interview. So here we go. I'm going to start with the first question. Why did you choose to be a teacher? I remember many years ago on my fridge, there was a saying which I thought was, was awesome. It said, life begins at the end of your comfort zone. And I figured I became a teacher because that would really challenge myself in many ways. And it certainly proved to be that. Um, I think I really get along with kids. Um, I really enjoy interacting um, with teenagers. Um, so that's why I decided to become a teacher. When I was in elementary school, I was already like one of the teacher assistants. Um, so like I had a lot of fun with them. Um, they were like my little friends, uh, my little siblings. Um, so yeah, I just thought it would be fun and entertaining to become a teacher. Well, um, I used to want to be a veterinarian. I think I like taking care of things and animals, but that's, I'm not smart enough to do that. But I get to take care of kids and they're kind of like animals. so. It, I guess it turned out okay. Ever since I was a little kid, I just always liked helping people. So, yeah. Oh, that's heartwarming. That's very adorable. Wow. Is that a sarcasm I said? No. Okay. Not at all. Yeah, sure. <laughs> okay. Whatever. Oh, why did I choose to be a teacher? I didn't choose to be a teacher when I came out of high school. That's one thing. Uh, but I chose to be a teacher because I really enjoyed working with young people, with youth. I, I, I chose to be a teacher because I tolerate young people. In fact, I enjoy them to an extent, uh, uh, being around them because they have, sometimes they have nice ideas and sometimes you can mess with them because they think they have nice ideas, but they really don't. Well, I didn't know what to do. <laughs> and then I decided to do some volunteer work in order to explore different careers. And I ended up volunteering in a classroom and I loved it. And so that's when I decided to become a teacher. I, I like working with kids and I like learning and I like helping kids learn. Nothing too fancy there. Uh, any embarrassing teaching moments? Yeah, uh, actually when I was training to be a teacher, um, I was teaching a biology 11 class and I was up at the board and I dropped the, uh, the, mark, uh, dropped the dry erase marker. And as I went, bent down to pick it up, my pants, I was wearing chinos, fully ripped. Uh, and so I excused myself from the class and I said, okay, I just gotta go for a moment, uh, you do your thing. I walked out, I saw my sponsor teacher and I told her, hey, my pants ripped, what do I do? And she just laughed at me. And she just, just go back in there, they're not gonna notice. So I went the whole class just kind of covering it up. I think the most embarrassing teaching moment is when I realize that students know people that I know and I get really nervous about the like transfer of information. For example, my best friend is working with a former CSU in London grad right now. Oh. And I'm like, oh my goodness, <laughs> don't tell her anything about me. Which suggests that you have incriminating information yes. to be yes. told about you. Okay, yes, I see. Yes. Okay. I That's a future that interview. All... That's a future interview. Yes, yes, okay. yes. Yeah. There's been a lot of those, uh, too many to mention, but if you ask anyone that graduated, I'm sure they would have a very long list of how I embarrassed myself. But the weird thing is, I don't get embarrassed a lot. That's part of my problem. Unfortunately, there are many. Um, I think one of the most embarrassing ones, um, you know, safety in the lab is very important. And I was in the lab, and this was at a different school, and I was playing with, I think, a a scupula and I was flipping it on the table and when I flipped it it went shooting up and stuck into the ceiling and there it was for a rather long period of time until finally I think one day it's some I looked up and it was gone um, I'm not sure where it came down hopefully nobody was injured this happened a long time ago I thought it was my prep it wasn't my prep but I left the school or I left the school and I came back with five minutes left to my prep went into my classroom the whole class was there because it wasn't my prep Happened a long time ago, like three or four months ago. What is the biggest lie you told as a teacher? Uh, pass. 
I don't tell any lies. So this question, Google, you got that one wrong. I have no idea. <laughs> I probably, I lie all the time about vocabulary and then find out I'm wrong. Um, I think when I was a young teacher, I, I used to like say things in life mattered more than they did to try to get students to do things at their seat to keep busy. And now I realize that that was not correct. And so I don't spread that. I say things now that we should, but I don't say those lies anymore. So stop teachers saying those things. Um, I think uh, there are moments uh, I had my yellow classes. I would tell the kids that, oh, there will be a test tomorrow or like, you know, this week. But then like, it turns out that like, I just want them to study or like to be um, reading or reviewing the materials, but like the, actually there's no test. Well, first of all, I never lie. Secondly, <laughs> um, okay, so my grade 10, at season line in my grade 10 boys volleyball team, they, um, I guess, okay, so every year, the, every year the PE teachers celebrate your birthday, and my birthday had already passed, but they celebrated my fake birthday, and then the grade 10 boys volleyball team found out, thought, thinking that it was my real birthday, and then they created a whole, like, birthday celebration for me and got me a gift, and I felt so bad. So you lied and said it was your birthday. <laughs> so I still pretended it was my birthday. Sorry, Daryl, Chris Lamb, Bowen, all those guys. Okay. Well, that's a tough one. I mean, that's one one of my real don'ts. I don't like to lie. And so off the top of my head, I honestly cannot think of one. And I think that's a good thing. If I won the lottery and decided to give up teaching, ha, that is not even a thing. I wouldn't give up teaching. Uh, what would I do instead? Uh, I would still teach. Uh, but everybody would get an iPad, even you. I'd buy this school and I'd give it to you guys. It's a tough one. As someone who wanted to be a teacher forever, I didn't really come up with a plan B, which was questionable. Um, I think I would want to do something else in another like helping profession still, or you know, maybe be like that really cool TOC who like comes in and gives you like the funnest day ever. Because if I'm like a gajillionaire, I don't need to care about money, so I can just like occasionally work and be the really cool TOC who gives you like the fun day when your teacher's gone. Yeah, I think I'd do that. So maybe stick with teaching, but in like a different way. Uh, traveling blogger. I really like to travel um, and I like to eat. I really, that's why I like my students. It's very interesting. They always like to give me like uh, snacks or like uh, they make me bubble teas or like uh, they give me lots of teas. Uh, as a parting gift, um, so because they know like how much I love to eat, so like, I think I would um, either be a travel blogger or a foodie blogger. Oh, I would definitely become a travel blogger and go all over the world and write articles that maybe no one would read, but that's all I ever wanted to do, travel. <laughs> uh, I would probably become a chef. That's another tough one because I love teaching and I, I have various degrees. I've worked as a marine biologist and I've worked as a forester. But if I did win the lottery, you know what I would do? I think what I would do is instead of teaching seven blocks, I would teach six. And with the extra money, I just have a bigger house. What do you wish you knew when you're 18? I wish I knew that the, all the things I think are important weren't that important and that as you get older like you define yourself more so I think that who you become in your 20s from 20 to 29 is really a lot more important than who you were in high school and um, yeah and your character is way more defined in your 20s and and you shouldn't put so much importance on all the things that happen in high school when I was 18 I thought I knew everything and I remember my mom saying well you know you're still pretty young and I was scandalized because at 18 you're legally an adult so I thought I knew everything and now that I'm 50 something uh, I know that uh, there's so much that I don't know there's something called the Dunning-Kruger effect you might have heard of it uh, the less people know usually the more they're really overconfident that they know tons. Whereas people who actually know a lot usually know that they don't know much because <laughs> there's so much more to learn. I think, I think, I think I didn't know, I think I thought what people were about and what situations were about and I was overconfident in those things 
and I should have I should have spread my wings more. I should have hung out with people and said hi to people and not been so clicky. And you realize later that some of those people were really cool or could have added value to your life, but you're you're focused on this and really I should have been like that. So what was the question? That's what I wish I knew, that my mind was broad, not as narrow. It's still pretty narrow though. Oh gosh, this was a lifetime ago. Uh, I wish that I knew when I was 18 that you could get a McDouble like a Mac. So if you don't know, now you know. Well, when I was about 25, I figured out that if you put a donut in the microwave for about seven seconds, it elevates the quality of the donut. So if I knew that when I was 18, that's seven more years of elevated donuts. So um, that knowledge is power. I think the most important thing I wish I knew was if I just was myself, it would have been a lot easier. I wasn't trying to fool anybody. I basically think I'm a good person. Um, if I was simply myself, I think life would have been a lot easier. What I wish I knew when I was 18 is that some of the friends that I had then would still be some of my closest friends when I turned 50. <laughs> and so the friendships that you can have in high school, the people that you can meet and know, those people can help to guide you and support you and help you to be the person that you want to be through your whole life if you want them to be. And I am very grateful for that. And I hope that you also, for friendships and people that you cherish, that they continue to stay in your life. What life advice would you like to pass on to your students? The students of Steve's in London, each and every one of you that I've met, are outstanding individuals. You don't have to prove anything to the world. Just be yourself, try hard, and I will be unbelievably surprised if you're not successful. Put a donut in the microwave for seven seconds. No one should make school or their job their whole life. Um, I'm a bit of a workaholic, but uh, I know my uh, partner always says to me, you know, no one got, uh, no one has on their tombstone, she was really good at her job. <laughs> so make sure you make time for the other things in your life. The life advice is exactly what my problem was, is to do this, is to think very broadly and consider things and listen to people. Uh, because most of the time you're, you're maybe not right about what you think. You gotta take time and listen to people. So please do that. Except me, that's not, you cannot, you can, when I'm talking, you do this with your mind. You don't do this. Um, money's not everything. Uh, you know, happiness and knowledge. Money doesn't, doesn't buy at all. Here's a life pro tip. I don't use Google, I use DuckDuckGo because I don't wanna give these people any more information that they already have. You don't have to know everything now, but you should try as much as you can because sometimes opportunities only come once and they're scary. But if you don't try them, then you don't gain that experience or if you might fail and then you gain wisdom and that's worth it. It's worth it to do things that you're scared to do. What is a life motto that you live your life by? Care and respect. It's not a motto, but I think everything I do, I try to think about how it impacts people. Not that I always make the right decisions or always do things that are good for other people, but I think about it and I try. It's not really a motto. I just try it. You know, just try to be a good person. Most of the time it doesn't work. Ooh. I always say live in the dream, but um, hard work pays off. So work hard. Life motto I try to live my life by is to find my full potential and help other people find their full potential. This is for my grandfather. You always make the best of it. And I think what he made by that was there'll be challenging times, but what you do is you do the best you can. And, I, and he promised me that if you do the best you can, sometimes you will fail, but most of the time you will succeed. And everybody will, you'll have a lot of respect from everybody you come in contact with. Uh, live, live your life to the f fullest. Carpe the DM. <laughs> uh, try and try again. What would the students be surprised to find out about you? I'm a fantastic cook. Uh, they would be surprised to find out that at home I never wear a suit jacket. Um, 
At home, it's usually an Oscar the Grouch shirt because I have little kids. Sesame Street all the way. I think probably you'd be surprised to know that in high school, I was super shy and never put up my hand and never answered anything. <laughs> And then something happened in university. I don't know what. In grade, in my senior year, in grade 12, I actually had shoulder length hair because I was part of a rock band. Um, not only was I part of a rock band, I was also part of a rap band as well as a folk rock band. So uh, we did, we had a lot of cool songs. One of them was called Danger Minutes. Don't ask about that one. Well, here's something that not many people know. Uh, and I think it's okay to say this now because it's so long ago. Uh, I was a police officer for about 13 months. And that was my first, was my first job. I had lots of jobs, but that was my first, I guess, profession. And then for a variety of reasons, I'm not doing that anymore. That I'm actually a really good golfer and not, and not a really good base basketball player. I'm okay, I'm decent, but I'm actually a better golfer. The students might be surprised to know that I graduated from University of King's College in Halifax which is a university, it's quite small, um, and that it has a liberal arts education. It's a bit of a unique program. Well, it would be surprised to find out that um, I think I've been divorced before, and I found out when I was a younger person that divorce, I thought there'd be something wrong with people. But no, life happens, and life happens for a purpose. Um, I've been happily married now for the past 20 odd years, uh, my present wife is outstanding. I have four wonderful kids. And maybe you'd think Mr. Rowley was never divorced, but guess what? He was. What are you the 1% of? Well, if there's 10 David Mergenses and 990 Mr. Ubiels, I'd be in the 1%. Yeah. I am the 1% of those that like 1% milk. Think about that one for a moment. I'm the 1% of coaches that have coached someone that has played in the NCAA. There's not many people that can say that, so I'm pretty good about that. Uh, overthinking. But with overthinking, you get thinking. Oh, that sounds like overthinking. Oh, God. I just proved my point. I am in the top 1% of people who lose things. Well, according to my wife, I don't know what her definition is, but she says I am weird in a good way. So maybe, I don't know if there's 1%, but maybe there's other people who are weird in a good way. Use three words to describe your high school experience. Um, I would say exciting, terrible, and confusing. Too much homework. Fun. Uh, super fun. There you go, there's three words. Uh, one of them would be awesome. Uh, another one would be, uh, I'd have to say it was kind of chill because I didn't work that hard in high school. And uh, the third word I would describe is maybe, hmm, I don't know if this is a great word, but learning. I learned a lot in high school, uh, in school and out of school. Fun, stressful, exciting. What just happened would be my three words. Honest review of my high school experience. When I was there, it was okay. Oh, it was so good. Uh, I look back at the times, I was a different person back then, so I can't really say like how current Mr. Ubiel would be in, uh, in high school, but I just remember it being fun, uh, especially uh, your last year, senior year was good. It was, it, it was just a different vibe. My high school experience was really good. I, uh, I really enjoyed my high school, especially my senior high, because it was only grade 11s and 12s, and we met lots of new people from other schools and we made lots of really good new friends and we had lots of fun together with uh, the, the people that, the new people that we met and, and, um, and you know, made friends with. Um, to be honest, it was one of those ones that had a slow start, but uh, I definitely enjoyed grade 11 and 12. Um, 
partly because sports was better too? Um, it was really, really fun. I got to do a lot of things. and um, But I was really shy and I didn't do as much as I should have. Fair. What is the biggest lie you told your teacher in high school? Pass. I can't remember. Like I said, I don't lie, so trick question. I'm gonna have to go with uh, my dog ate my homework. This is so bad. Okay, I'm adopted, and I actually told a teacher because I didn't do my science assignment in grade nine that uh, I didn't do it because I was said I was bullied all weekend about being adopted, and it's such a lie because it didn't. I just didn't do it. I was a bad student in grade nine. Probably most of it would be related to attendance and my reasons why I was away. Um, probably that I studied or did my homework when I didn't, and, or, <laughs> I, I really didn't lie very often. I would usually admit when I didn't do something and take the punishment, to be honest. If you were given a superlative when you were in high school, uh, what would it have been? I actually, like Mr. Mergens, got a superlative. Uh, I was voted with, uh, actually, I, I shared this with uh, my other classmate, whom I share a birthday with. Uh, we're twins, um, and uh, the superlative we were given, we're the nicest grads, so. Oh, I was given one. I, I received friendliest. Actually, I was given a superlative. When I was in grade 10, I think, I got um, Princess Charming, which I'm very surprised about because I was very shy. I was a little bit crazy in high school, but I think all high school students are a little bit crazy. Uh, so maybe I would have to go with that. I don't know. I don't think I was that outstanding uh, to be given a superlative. Um, <laughs> it might have been something as exciting as tallest. <laughs> I was pretty tall uh, in high school for my age because uh, I grew early. So it might have just been tallest. Uh, I don't know if it would have been anything more exciting than that. What do you miss most after graduating high school? Probably the amount of fun and freedom I had because, and connections, you know, you're, you're with students all the time, you're with your classmates all the time and you get to see them every day. And then when you go off to university, you have to make more of an effort to see those people and sometimes that's really difficult and that change is really hard. So I don't think your friendships are ever really the same after, after high school. It was carefree. I didn't have a worry in the world, no stress whatsoever. I had no plans about what I was gonna do with my life. I was not planning to go to post-secondary. I would just get a job, it would get figured out, it would get worked out. That's all I believed and I didn't have one responsibility I had to do, and it was an incredible time in my life. I'm never getting that back again, and I fear that you guys never had that, and I think that's part of, remember I was talking about the values before? I think maybe we need to think about that. Not to not be busy and do stuff, but just to rethink how we do it. To be completely honest, I don't actually miss a lot about my high school career, but that's partly because the people who were the most important to me are still in my life. I think the most I miss is like the connections, like the hallways, um, hanging out with friends like after school and stuff. I mean, I think I'm gonna date myself. I'm in my 40s now and I see five guys I graduated with. I don't see anybody else. There's a little bit of Facebook and social media, but I just miss that part, the connections, mm -hmm. doing all the grad events. Uh, definitely would do grade 12 all over again. Maybe seeing my high school friends on a daily basis. <laughs> Uh, because after high school, you didn't really see them as often. But on the flip side of that, when you did see them, it was extra special because if you haven't seen somebody for a long time and you're good friends with these people, it is it was great to see them again. So that was maybe, I do miss not seeing my friends on a daily basis, but it actually made seeing them, when I did see them, it made them really good because you really have this deep connection that you make with people in high school and you keep it for rest of your life. So even after 25 years, when I went to my reunion, I hadn't seen people in 25 years, but that was really good. Uh, the lack of real responsibility? Uh, a couple things. One is organized sports. Uh, you get to do that to an extent in uni or whatever it is you do outside. Um, and also uh, just the 
uh, fewer real responsibility. You don't have to pay any bills and stuff, and that's, and you don't have to change diapers and stuff. So, uh, so yeah, there it is. 2021 autocomplete interview.